This is David, you're watching BTEC. Welcome. This video is sponsored by Direct Mobiles. For the best mobile deals, check out directmobiles.co.uk. Today, I've got the Realme 6 Pro and I've got the Realme Buds 2. They sent them along with the 6 Pro and the Realme 6 for the price of just over 200 pounds, 230 euros, around about the same in pounds. You get a hell of a lot of smartphone a 64 megapixel quad camera system, dual front cameras. I don't care who you are or what kind of brand loyalty you have, you have to be impressed by this phone. The Realme 6 Pro, I hear you snigger that maybe this is a budget phone, but when I tell you the specifications, there's no way that anyone could class this as a budget phone. First of all, it's running the brand new Snapdragon 720G. New chip from Qualcomm, the Realme 6 Pro is the first phone to have it. This one has a max clock speed of 2.3 gigahertz and has good power efficiency through its eight nanometer manufacturing process. It should also have very, very good camera performance from the 64 megapixel camera system. Again, 64 megapixels doesn't really sound like a budget phone, does it? And it doesn't stop there. This pretty much has flagship specs throughout. We've got 6.6 .6 inch IPS LCD screen, 1080 by 2400 resolution, 480 nits brightness and 390 PPI. But the best bit about this screen is that it's a 90 hertz display with 120 hertz touch sensing. So let me just pause here for a second. This is a smartphone with a 90 hertz display, a 64 megapixel quad camera. It's even got dual front cameras. I'll get to the cameras in a bit. It's built on an eight nanometer process. This model has eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, and for less than 300 pounds. Like I am really impressed how Realme are able to deliver this level of tech for this price. The battery is a 4,300 milliamp hour unit. Again, really impressive for this price. I'm really struggling to see any kind of downside with this phone. The battery also supports 30 watt charging, so it's gonna be charged up super fast. You can get this juiced up from zero to 100% in 57 minutes, which is not bad at all. On the rear of the Realme 6 Pro, we've got a quad camera system with a Samsung GW1 64 megapixel sensor and an f1.8 lens. There's also an eight megapixel ultra wide angle and a 13 megapixel two times telephoto lens that can zoom all the way up to 20 times hybrid. This phone is the first in its price bracket to have a zoom lens. Finally, there is a macro lens, which is capable of focusing as close as four centimeters to its subject. The night mode has a special tripod mode, which allows you to capture longer exposures of up to 15 seconds. And you can shoot night mode with the ultra wide angle and the telephoto lenses. For video, it can shoot 1080p up to 60 frames per second and 4K up to 30 frames per second. But while shooting at 60 frames, 1080p and at 4K 30, you won't be able to use the ultra wide angle lens. Video performance seems to be good. Stabilization is there at 1080p. There doesn't really seem to be much going on at 4K unless you switch on the ultra steady mode. This gives you unbelievable stabilization by shooting with the ultra wide angle camera and then heavily cropping in to correct for any shake. The general photo mode I've found to be very good. You do get a very strong HDR effect if you shoot with it turned on. There is a pure 64 megapixel mode that doesn't give you any shooting aids or anything like that. It just lets you shoot at 64 megapixels. It is quite hard to get a sharp shot even in bright conditions but it's great that you can shoot at 64 megapixels and it gives you plenty of possibilities to reframe your shot, allowing you to crop in very far and still have a high quality photo. Portrait shots do have a nice quality to them, even with the front camera. The front camera is actually very good with good HDR effect, allowing you to expose both your subjects and a bright background. The main selfie camera is a 16 megapixel unit and it sits alongside an eight megapixel ultra wide angle camera with a 105 degree field of view. It seems like a very solid camera system, but you've just got to keep reminding yourself of the price. In this price range, this has got to be the best camera you can get. If we take a look at its design, well, it has a very flashy back panel that we've come to kind of expect from Realme phones. Looks wise, it's not too bad at all. The screen has fairly sizable bezels all the way around. I've definitely seen worse, but there they are. Underneath, we've got the good old headphone jack and a down firing mono speaker. I like the placement of the volume buttons on the left side. They're two separate buttons and not one single rocker. And I think I prefer that. Over on the other side, we've got the fingerprint scanner, which is also a power button and it has a little bit of a click to it. The one thing I would say about its design is that it's quite thick and quite a chunky phone. It's even a little bit thicker than the Realme X50 Pro 5G. Although the construction does make it feel lighter and a little bit less premium than the X50 is. The frame is plastic and the device is covered with Gorilla Glass 5 on the back and the front. 
Just like the X50 Pro 5G that I reviewed the other day, this runs Realme's new user interface, Realme UI, based on Android 10. I've been using it for the past few weeks on the X50 Pro and I really like it. They've kept it very close to stock Android, but it does have Realme touches here and there. As well as the standard virtual navigation buttons, there are two other types of swipe gesture navigation. Dark mode is extremely good in the Realme phones and it gives you the option to force third party apps to go dark. This feature is still in beta and it might not work perfectly with all of the applications, but it's great that almost everything that we commonly use now has a dark mode. But if you think 230 euros is just a little bit too much money, then you might be interested in the Realme 6. You get a 90 Hertz Full HD Plus display, the same resolution, but this time it's a 6.5 inch display and it's covered in Gorilla Glass 3. You still get a 64 megapixel quad camera system, although it's not exactly the same camera system and it doesn't quite perform as well as the Pro does from my initial test. The main sensor is the same as the Pro with the large 1.172 inch sensor, which on the whole performs very well and shows good low light performance. This is complemented by an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera and two 2 megapixel sensors. One is a macro lens and the other is used to gather depth information. They're both using Samsung's GW1 64 megapixel sensor, but they're both running completely different chipsets. The Realme 6 is running a MediaTek Helios G90T, which is a chip produced from a 12 nanometer die. Camera performance is dependent on the capabilities of the chipset. Despite the 6 and the 6 Pro having the same main sensor, the performance boost that you get from the Pro is easily noticeable for both photo and video. But maybe I'm being a little bit hard on this device because it costs from £189 and you get four cameras on the back. One is a 64 megapixel shooter. I don't think you can get anywhere close to this amount of camera tech for less money. This model has got eight gigabytes of RAM and it's the same 4,300 milliamp hour battery that the Pro has. And it's compatible with the VOC flash charging 3.0 for that 57 minute full recharge time. Physically, it's almost identical to the Pro, but with slightly less elaborate pattern across the back and with only a single selfie cutout. Both phones have a wide 20 by nine aspect ratio. I feel that both phones are a good size, especially for gamers. I found that playing games on the Pro especially is nice as the wide aspect ratio and large screen gives a good experience. I'm searching for negative things to say about these phones. To be really hard on them, I would say that the plastic construction feels far less premium than the more expensive X50 Pro 5G that I tested the other day. But the Realme 6 and the Realme 6 Pro are filled with the latest tech, especially the Pro with its new Qualcomm 8 nanometer processor. You do notice the difference in speed between the two handsets if you use them side by side. And the camera performance is a lot better with the Pro. If you ask me, I think that Realme have priced these too close to each other because I don't see any reason to go for the Realme 6. It's not really that much more money to get the Pro version. Maybe they should have made the Realme 6 a little bit smaller to appeal to people who don't like a near phablet sized phone. Whatever your tastes are, if you're the kind of person that just wants to buy your phone outright and doesn't want to spend anything near what the very latest flagship costs, but you still want the latest tech in your smartphone, well, you really should be interested in the Realme handsets. But if you're all about the brand names, then this one's probably not for you. And finally, let's unbox the Realme Buds 2. The first time I listened to these headphones was way back in August, and immediately you can't help but be impressed by the bassy sound that you get from these, especially when you consider that these only cost 15 pounds. If you're the type that likes wired headphones, and I know a lot of people do, then these really are a good companion for your Realme 6 series smartphone. 11.2 mm bass boost drivers give them a deep and rich sound. Good design has gone into this product. There are magnets to keep the earpieces together and it has an anti-twining cable and a cable organizer attached. But the build materials don't feel like they are the highest quality. The earbuds are plastic and they do feel like quite a thin gauge plastic. Again, these are extremely affordable headphones which are reliable and designed well. And most importantly, they have a decent sound. If you saw my videos about the Realme X50 Pro 5G, then you'll know that I was really impressed by that device. Being the out and out flagship 5G device from Realme, it does cost over 700 pounds. This phone, however, brings you very close to the experience that you get from the X50 Pro for much less. 
less than 200 pounds for the Realme 6, and less than 250 for the 6 Pro. I can't see how you can get more performance for this price. If you want to know more about the Realme phones, then check out my X50 Pro 5G reviews. I'll leave some links down in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, then hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know every time we post a video. And if you're looking for your next mobile phone, then the best place to look is the Direct Mobile's website. They've got over 24 years of award-winning customer service, so you really are in good hands. Direct Mobiles is there to find you the best possible price. The link is in the video description below or search directmobiles.co.uk. And if you're looking for the best tech and accessories, then make sure you check out the BTEC Amazon shop. If you choose to buy anything through our shop front, then a small portion of the sale goes towards the channel. If you've done so already, then we appreciate it. Thank you so much. And if you haven't, well, the link is in the description below. And that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can follow me on social media. I'm David, this is BTECT.